So I'm choosing. I think that you are recording the talks. Yes. And then you are putting them on the internet. So uh, to increase the impact of these lectures, I think it would be better for me to, to speak English, even uh, with a terrible French accent. Nevertheless, it gives a uh, hope for foreign people uh, to get this talk. OK. Huh? okay uh, we're going to, to make it this way. Uh, so first, I would like to thank the organizers for uh, inviting me to give a talk uh, here in this uh, workshop uh, school in, on, uh, organized by the uh, Institute for Mathematics of Planet Earth. And also, I would like to thank uh, Anna, who gave me the opportunity to give a talk in this joint, in, in this joint uh, intervention. Alors, I, I know that what is written here is really quite different from what you have on the program. On the program, it's a story about uh, power systems modeling. Okay? And so, I, I, had, the op I had the choice to, of several talks, and um, I think it's a story about... Uh, Uh, climate change and how to handle uh, uh, climate change and its effect and stuff. Uh, since I'm, I'm working since a certain time on the, the carbon emission market, I, I thought that it would be interesting to talk about that because it's an important levy to uh, reduce carbon emissions. And, uh, and also my slides were already there, so I think I just had to make a copy-paste. So it was quite, and, and, and I think it is, it is interesting both from a practical point of view on uh, carbon emission reduction and also from a mathematical point of view because you're going to see that uh, I'm going to present a, uh, something, a result that we had uh, with Sarah Biagini. And it's a very nice result. I like it a lot. It's very surprising. And nevertheless, in, in the kind of a model that we assess, it is, it is true. So this is what I'm going to talk about. And alors, I'm going to try the pointer. The pointer, does it work? The pointer? Oh, yes. Oh, see, it marche. Okay. So, uh, so this, this, this work has started with Sarah Biagini in 2015. She's at Lewis University. And, and then uh, we, we hired Maya, Maria Arduca as a postdoc student uh, to work on, on a joint project with uh, Luca Taschini who is a specialist of, of carbon emissions market and is at Edinburgh University. And, and recently, I asked a, 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 young, a young student, Bob Thomas, who is at University Paris Dauphine, to help me to handle data. Okay. So let's try the, the first functionality works, the, the pointer. And, and, and my name is René Aïd, okay? and, and I'm professor of economics at, at, at Paris Dauphine University. Okay, okay. That, that's, that's it. OK. Uh, bon, ça marche. Non, ça marche pas, donc euh, les flèches. OK. So here is the agenda. So you see that there are something like 60 slides in one hour and a half. If I speak very quickly and I don't let you ask questions, I can make it. OK. But this is not the idea. So there is more material than what I'm going to present. But everything is there. And so you can have it. And I think that you're going to give the slides and there are many references in that. So first, I'm going to, to motivate a little uh, this, this work and uh, how we, uh, why we work uh, on that. Then I will present data, uh, the work of, of Bob. And then I will present the model that we developed with Sarah, the first model that we developed to, to try to understand what was the, the, the optimal regulation of carbon emissions market. And then I will present the result of this model. And there are more extensions that we did now with Maria Arduca and Luca Taschini On, on carbon market emission and inflation. And then I will try to conclude if you are still there. Okay, so far so good. So some motivations. Alors, there are two kinds of people normally, those who know about carbon emissions market, and for them what I'm going to say is not new, and you know that, and those who never heard about that, you work on different subjects and everything that I'm going to say is going to be new. So carbon permits, Car market of carbon permits. It's a, it's a market where there are allowances, papers, which are tradable. People can trade papers where it is written one ton of CO2. Okay? And they can be purchased on a dedicated market, like in France, you can buy them on UEX, European Energy Exchange. You can buy those types of papers. And we call that the spot. The spot market is a market where you're going to buy this paper. Okay, 
And this paper can be used to compensate for your greenhouse gas emissions, okay, in carbon equivalence terms. Okay, each permit offset one metric ton of CO2. Huh? And because it's a market, there is a price that is formed and gives the price of this, of this commodity, okay, which is carbon emission. Okay, and we're going to see that. And there's a lot of debate on whether it is preferable to do a tax or whether it is preferable to do those types of markets. Okay, and we're going to talk about that. Okay, so this is the first. So compliance, the market works because some actors in the market, they face, they, are, they have to comply on a certain level of emission reduction or they have to comply on a maximum level that they have to, that they can uh, emit in the atmosphere per year. Okay? Uh, and every year, normally, there is a verification of what they did, what their emissions they did. I'm going to talk about that. If you ask questions, it's not truly verification like someone is coming around, but there is like, like when you do your, uh, your balance sheet every year, there is someone who comes, you know, a commissaire au compte, someone, a guy who is coming and checks what you do, but then you can have also the FISC, okay, the fiscal authority who comes, make a dissent to say, was it true what was written on your books, okay? And so the target of this market are in energy intensive companies like metal industry, oil and gas industry, public power and heat system, uh, lime, I don't know what is it, it's not, uh, c'est pas du citron, uh, it's something else, uh, I can't remember. Cement, I know, airlines, and airlines, I'm going to talk, they, they entered in the, in, in the framework later on. And in Europe, this mechanism is named Emission Trading System, ETS. And the name is European Union Emission Trading System. Okay, it's a very important system to reduce carbon emission. There are other countries who does that. China, China has launched also a carbon emission system. So now they are divided in several regions. In each region, they have their own market of emission. Okay, and they are going to join. In Canada also has some, California has some. Okay, okay, okay. So I'm focused on what happens in Europe and I'm focused on the European Union trading system. So first it was launched some time ago. Now we are in 2024. So it was launched something like 19 years ago. C'est ça, 2005. It started in 2005, and at that time, I think more or less, it covers something like 15,000 heavy energy using installation. Okay, and this is what we call at that time stationary installation. They cannot run away. Okay, they are there. It's not like cars, but also it's not diffusive like cars, or it's not diffusing like the heating system that you may have in your house. It's only big stationary installation, like uh, a cemetery, but mostly like electricity power plants running on coal or running on gas or on fuel, because there are some also at that time in 2005, there were also a lot of, um, of uh, stationary installation producing electricity which were running on oil. Okay? And so here is a list, uh, oil refineries, metal, cement, glass, ceramic, pulp, paper, acid, mechanicals. Okay. All those installations are called, they have to comply every year on their emissions. Okay. And so there was a first experimental phase which lasted three years and which started in 2005. Three years, 2005, 2006, 2007. At the end of 2007, they restarted. And they made this phase to help the owners of this installation to learn the process of how it will work, this compliance period, verification, and blah, blah, and so on and so forth. Okay, so try to learn. And so presently, we are in the phase number four, I guess, and it's going to run for 2021 to 2030. Okay? And in 2030, we don't know what's going to happen because, because right away, I think there is, there is uncertainty about are they going to go on and make a phase five or are they going to stop? Okay, so we don't know, but normally there's going to be phase five. You know? It's just like Rambo uh, or uh, Rocky 
uh, when, you think, when you think it is the last episode, nevertheless, there is a new episode, okay? Because it runs, okay? So, so how does it work? So the regulator emits a certain number of permits. At time zero, he emits a certain number of permits. And during the phase one, because it was a phase where, where, where companies had to learn, okay, and also, they gave the allowances to firms, okay? So they made complicated computations, okay? And then they decided the total amount. They had an idea of how much they should reduce, and they gave allowances to countries, and countries gave them the, their, their allocations to their industry, okay? Question? Alors, alors, it, alors, it was first by per country, and when it arrives in the country in 2005, then everybody went to the Ministry of Energy to, to say that they need more, okay? And the conversation was uh, firm per firm, but also at the industry level, okay? For instance, uh, I don't want to give names, but uh, uh, those who work, uh, who produce steel industry, they are there, and so for them, they use a lot of electricity and they, and they produce a lot of, uh, of carbon emission, and so there were, and, okay, they were asking for allowances, okay? So discussions are like that, but in the end, it is a total amount, okay? And because also it was a, it was a, a phase where uh, people had to learn, huh? they had to learn how you, to handle those papers, it was physical papers that was delivered to, to firms, this is the thing that you have to understand, okay? It was delivered to firms, physical papers with a number and stuff like that, Okay, and people started uh, to, to do that. Okay, okay. And at the beginning, the allocation was generous. Okay, it was generous. And it's a system that we call cap and trade. So people receive these permits. Okay, and at the end of the year, what is happening, here it was at the end of the phase number three, but normally each year, there is a verification of how much allowances did you, how much, carbon emission did you emit in the atmosphere? And so, and people, because they have a certain, no, they have to produce for each ton of, 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 of emission, they have to produce a paper, okay? In front of each ton, they produce a paper. And if they don't, if they fail to do that, they pay a penalty. Fiscalement, uh, fiscally, it is a penalty. It's not like a, a cost, it is a penalty. So you cannot deduce them from your uh, tax balance sheet, huh? okay? So you pay a penalty, okay? Because you lack, for instance, 10 tons, and the penalty at that time was 40 euros per, per ton. So 100 tons times 40 euros makes 4,000 euros. So you pay 4,000 euros, but you still need to get those allowances and to produce the allowances a few months later, okay? The papers, the physical. This is called what in France, it's non-liberatory. Okay, you, it, it's just like when you, you pay a fine, uh, it's not because you pay a fine that you can burn all the red lights afterward. Okay, d'accord? Okay, good. So far, so good. Okay, ta 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 ta, -ta. Okay, I'm going to present things uh, just later on. Okay, so you pay the penalty, uh, and now the penalty is 100 euro per ton. Okay, later on, phase number two, as, 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 as quickly as phase number two, permits, uh, the, uh, part of it was, uh, yes, 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 yes. So the, the allocation was generous, and I'm going to show that. Uh, and there were a lot of allocation, really a lot. And because there was a lot of uh, allocation of, of permits, then the price was very low. Okay, you are going to see that. The price was very low, and the, the signal price was, uh, was, was very bad. And also, there was this economic recession in 2008, and after the, the, the economic recession in 2008, then it was, uh, th there was a lot of reduction of activity, so less emission, so it was a mess, and you're going to see that on the price curve. And so, because of that, at, starting at phase three, in episode number three, they started, the regulator started to, to develop a new mechanism, and this mechanism is intended to try to provide the appropriate level of allowances in the market, not too much, but not too many. And so this, this mechanism is named market stability reserve. It is in the law now, and it helps to monitor the total number of circulating allowances. It's just like if you want to see like the mass monetaire, the monetary mass 
of allowances. If it is too big, the price is low. If it is too small, the price is high. Okay? But regarding the law, the regulator is not entitled to control the price. Okay? He, he, he cannot control the price, but he has the right to control the quantities of allowances in the market. Okay? And so they find a beautiful formula. Okay? So if the, I'm going to say that, if the total number of allowances in circulation, small name, TINAC, total numbers of allowances in circulation, falls under 400 millions, okay, the regulator has the right to launch, now it is auctions. They can launch new auctions and to increase the number of allowances in the market. Okay? Oui. Alors, répétez-moi la question. Can you repeat the question? In monetary policy. Yeah. Yes, yes. It, it, it has some similarity with monetary policy because you try to... Can you repeat the question? Alors, the question was, do you have, in, do they have in this, in this market some kind of tools which are corresponding to the monetary policy that they have to control inflation? For instance, to control inflation, you control the rate. Okay, the short-term rate of the central bank. Huh? It's a monetary policy 101. I have a colleague who tried to teach me that, but I think it is something like that. Here, it is not the case. The only thing that they have the right to is to try to control the, 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 the total number of, of allowances in circulation, and to do that, they only have this, this rule. And it, okay, so if, if, if the number falls under 400 million, they can allocate more. And 10, 12, I think 10 or 12 percent more, and if there is more than 833 millions, then they can stop making auctions. Okay, we're going to see that there are auction mechanisms. Yeah? So it's quite complicated. And in fact, I've learned, uh, thanks to a colleague, that this rule applies only once per year. So if you touch the boundary twice, uh, it does not work. Okay, so uh, I don't know who can compute the pricing, but The, this, this process makes the, the allocation mechanism of allowances in the market very dynamic. Okay? There are many rules. Go ahead. Yes. 300 million of allowances in the market. Yes. 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 Alors, they could. They could do both. Yeah. They could. And if the auction is unsuccessful, so you add allowances in the market, and the auction is, uh, is not successful, it means that nobody comes there, and the price that is generated by the auction is zero. But I'm not sure what the point of the auction. Ah, the auction, it increases the the number of allowances in the market. Because now you cannot have any more allowances freely. Now it's over. If you, if you run a power plant, and you know that you, it's a coal fire, fire plant, and you know that you're going to emit, I don't know, uh, let me guess, 100 million tons during the year, there is only one way to get them, to get those papers. Either you buy them on the market, Okay? Either you buy futures on the market, either you go to the auction and you get the paper. And normally there is an equilibrium between those two, these three quantities. So, am I right to say that if you have ah. a lot of allowances, you will create allowances, yes. then it will lower the price. It, 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 normally it, it, it might lower the price. It has to. Well, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It should, maybe it, it will. But if you, for instance, because it, uh, you're going to see the model, because with the model, I am sure you're going to like it. And you're going to see by equations what is going to happen, in particular because it depends on the anticipation of the actor or what's going to be the activity during the year and what's going to be the, the, the total emission at terminal time. Okay? We're going to see that. 
You are very nice because you don't ask me why is this number not purely increasing? It is not purely increasing because you have to redeem allowances. Alors, you don't see anything normally. Alors, okay. There are two pictures, uh, one with a block curve and this one, okay. This one was done by myself and this one was done, done by Bob. So this one is correct and this one you, you should be aware. Okay, but this one, the, the first one on the blue side, it's important because this, alors this one here is phase one. This one is phase one, okay? So it's phase one. You don't see the, the axis, but alors là, ah si, là ça marche aussi. Here, what you see, the three first years, three first years, and at the end of the three, it, the price started around 25 euros per ton, and the cap, the penalty was at 40, and at the end of the, the, the three years, the price went to zero. And the price went to zero, here it is the, 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 black, dot, the black line, where you, you can see here, it is cumulative emission minus allowances, so it is emissions minus allowances. So when it is negative, it means that there is less emissions than allowances. So in this situation, at the time, emissions by Europe was something like two gigaton per year. And so they wanted to reduce a little, just to make a try. So they say you're going to reduce by 10%. You go to two gigaton, and next year, at the end of the year, you should be 1.8, something like that, 10%. Ça fait deux, OK 1.8 gigaton. But then they gave to people exactly two millions, two gigaton. And in fact, there was no activity. And so, in fact, there were too many allowances. So at the end, nobody would pay the cap, would pay the penalty, because there were so many allowances in the market. So the price was zero. OK So that was true. OK So it works. Too many allowances, the price goes to zero. OK Alors, uh, and then this is phase two, phase three, and during, alors let's, where is 2008, the financial crisis? The financial crisis is, is, is somewhere here, it is here. This one is the financial crisis, and after financial crisis, there was a lot of reduction of activity, and mechanically, because there was a lot of reduction of activity, there was less emissions, and so there was less need for allowances, and so the price went down. Too many allowances, and you have to understand that, because the process by which allowances are put on the market is fixed in the marble. It is written in the marble. Okay? So the regulator announced in advance that he is going to put per year this amount and for the next year and the next year and the next year. So he announces and he commits himself with a trajectory of allowances that he's going to put on the market. Okay, so you know exactly what's going to happen, so you know what's going to be the total mass of allowances. Okay, and so when, when, when activity reduces, you know that there are too many of that. Okay, and so at that time, because of financial recession, there was a lot of, a lot, a lot of allowances, too many allowances, and because also it's a game where the regulator has to announce first. He has to, Professor Ivar, vous suivez? Okay. <laughs> D'accord, he has to announce first the trajectory of reduction, and then things happen in the economy. If there is a recession, he uh, cannot move it out. Okay, bon, d'accord. Je pense que vous avez compris. Hein, vous êtes, uh, okay. okay, so this one. And then, attendez, attendez, regardez, regardez, just for the fun. Okay, here it is the phase two, phase two, phase, uh, voilà, phase three, where the price is one. And then it started to increase when they started this market stability reserve when they had the possibility to reduce the number of allowances, the rate at which they would produce paper. When they tried to reduce the rhythm at which they produce paper, it gave them flexibility so that, in fact, they can control a little the carbon allowances in the market. Okay? And, and these phases there, it, it runs blah, 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 like this very, very, okay? This one was reduction. The, the, this one was Ukraine uh, uh, war the start of Ukraine war, and then it went up, and, and, the, and this one, this was the last one, was, a, was a, some kind of a, a strange decision. Okay, they, normally it's not made for this, but the European Union decided to use these permits market 
to bring cash, okay? They tried that to bring cash to finance stuff, okay? They needed cash to finance stuff, and they decided that they wanted to raise a certain amount of cash, and so they converted this amount of cash in number of allowances, and they increased the rate at which they produced paper, and in fact, they sold. At that time, 2004, they put to auction the number of allowances they should have put in 2005, in 25, in 2025. So they, they sold in advance, okay? It's just like, uh, je sais pas moi, you're looking for cash and you sell uh, uh, the furniture, okay? And then you get a little cash, okay? This is it. And, and this is what the increase, and so the price decreased, and because the price was going to down, people, some states, decided to buy back the allowances. Okay? I'm just looking at the time because it's, going, it's running fast. Okay, so a few words on data because I assume that everyone is interested in data. And in fact, it's a market, I discovered that with Bob, where every data, is, a lot of data with very fine granularity. Are, don't do that. I'm still, really, no, like this. Ah, no, no, je ne veux pas. Okay. <laughs> okay. It's better than just sleep on the table. Huh? Uh, okay. And so uh, Bob helped me uh, sort out the data, and I would like to, to show you. So, so there are a lot of the, first the prices, the prices, there are spot and future prices, and you can get them via Refinitiv. So if you're in a, in an economic department, these ones are easy to get. But also. You have all the data, the physical installation data, for all the European Union, okay, on a thing which is named the European Union Transaction Log website. So you have to be very patient, to, or you have a student, but then you can collect at the granularity of all the 15,000 uh, stationary installation, every data concerned them, okay? And also, uh, there is a, a website which is fantastic. Uh, it is website of uh, Jan Abrel, it is named UOTS.info, and he collected all these transaction log data, and he put them in a format which is easier to handle. So really, this is an entry point, a first kind of entry point to, to learn about that and to, to get them. And also, there is something which is very unusual, but very important. There are also the transactions log. So each time there is a transaction on the spot market of these papers, on these papers, it is written and there is a trace on the log and the trace are nominative. I'm going to show you that. And because they are nominative, you can only have them with a lag of three years. So right now in 2024, we can have access to the, all, the law, all the transaction up to 2019. I, I can, so look at that, Alors, this one is an installation. And our, sorry, it is in French. And I don't know why, but I know why we it is. But it is, for instance, la chaufferie d'appoint secours cachant. Don't ask me why. Bob picked this one. I know why, but okay. So this one, it's, a st it's an installation uh, in, in, in cachant, okay? And it should produce heat. And there is every code. There is the name, the address, the code. There is also, the, the, important, the owner of the installation, Dalkia. It is Dalkia. And you have... You have the graphic which is below. You don't see anything, but it starts, I think it starts in 2005, and it ends in 2023, in okay? And you see that its first year, it started to work, I guess, in 2013. I'm sure it started to work in 2013, and when it started to work in 2013, it received allocated allowances in blue, it, it receives something like 15,000 tons of CO2. So because Dalkia had this installation, they received the number of paper which correspond exactly to 15,000. At the end of the year, 2013, look at that, they make a check, a check, not a bank check, but a verification, and the emission that was verified by this was only 4,000. And there is no, the green thing, surrendered allowances. Surrendered allowances, they started to surrender allowances in 2016. Okay, so what is surrendered allowances? They have those papers, 
And at the end of the year, when the regulator comes, they say, I give you back a certain amount of those papers. And this is why the, number of, 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 uh, the total number of allowances in circulation can at some point decrease because people surrend papers. And so when they surrend, je finis, when they surrend papers, then there is a decrease. Mister. I don't know. Maybe they decided to pay the penalty. Maybe because it's a new installation, there is specific laws or regulation because look at that, the three first year they do nothing and they start to do something at the fourth year. So there is a lot of things like that. The, the, the law that regulates all these industries and stuff, for instance, I say that now everybody gets allowances, they have to go to auction. This is not completely true. There are still industry in Europe which still receives allocations free of charge. Okay, guess which one? You see, je pose des questions. Hein? Alors, <laughs> almost, they could. Raffineries, they could. They could. But, but still industry. Still industry, they, they still receive allowances free of charge because they say, we are importing steel from China and this one contains carbon and if we don't do that, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so, okay. They could. I don't know. This one is just one play. Alors, repeat. Alors, répétez-moi la question. Yes. Yes. No. Yes. 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 No, no, no. Oh, oui. Alors, I don't know exactly why in 2016 they, they surrendered this amount, then they surrendered this amount, here they, they exactly surrendered the amount that they get. But look at the trajectory of allowances they received. It is decreasing, then it is very small, but this one was like a guarantee. They knew in 2013 that they would receive during 2013, 2014, this amount, and this one maybe it was later. So they can make arbitrage and stuff. So it's not clear for me if this installation, in which type of constraint they enter when they have to redeem or not redeem allowances, okay? There are so many cases and so many niches. Rene, we have a question online yes. from Laurent Trousselier, who said uh, how to check how many gigatons of CO2 were emitted for a specific year by uh, this uh, chauffeur. Yes. Uh, is it declarative? Is it checked by some organism? Is it measured by a third-party company? Alors, that it, alors, I thought first uh, that it was... Uh, thanks for the questions. Uh, at first, I thought that was each installation was uh, physically uh, controlled by some regulator, like uh, an inspector. And in fact, it works more like the commissaire of compte when you have to do your balance sheet. This is the thing that, that I said. Normally, so you have someone who comes, to make a check, but this one is not like an inspector. It's like a commissaire au compte, and he checks that what the computation that you did and the measures that you did are valuable, they are, they are worth it, and they, they certify it, and then you publish it. But you may have police, let me check if the commissaire of compte is a regular and does a good job, or is this just your friend, okay? And so the, but this one are, are, are just like when you have the FISC controlling if you're uh, in, or your fiscal de declaration was correct, okay? So there are no policemen uh, behind each installation, okay? Okay, bon, so far so good. Mon 60 slides, j'en suis à 10, c'est bon. But I was told that there was no lecture after, okay? <laughs> okay, so here is a log. This one is the thing which is the most surprising and you don't see uh, anything, but it is, uh, okay, but well, let, me, let me try to explain. I see, you see something. Alors, look at that. It is a log and transaction date at the minute scale. And you have the, uh, the amount, or what else is, the trans transferring account name and acquiring name. So it, it went from this account to this account. And this one is uh, an identifier and there are numbers everywhere. 
okay, and this is also the numbers which are there, allows you to control everything and even which installation was owning these allowances. The thing is important is allowances are attributed per installation. Okay, and it is attributed per installation because you can sell the installation and you know how much installation was living with a certain number of allowances. And so you see the names also of those who do transactions. Look at that. BNP Paribas detention to Blue Next detention, Unitrade, and there is banks. Huh? Blue Next detention, Unicredit, and we pick this example to show you that there are banks who trade on this market. Okay? There is not only firms which have to be compliant by reduction of their emissions. The regulator introduced the right to hedge funds, banks, and other non-emissive companies to hold emissions for liquidity reasons. Okay. And here is an example that I like because it's a time series of how much EDF was holding as carbon emissions across time from 2013 to right uh, now. Okay, and you see that, for instance, each time in November, they have a lot of them. This one is November, November, November. And why is that? Because they have to redeem their allowances between the period of January to April. Okay, so they make their account, and then they buy futures, and at maturity futures, they deliver them allowances. They get those allowances by November to be sure to have them in December, and they redeem their allowances between January and April. It is the period of time where you have the time to comply with your regulation. Okay? So you have everything and you have all the data. Alors, alors, this one is tricky because what I brought you is the detention. I don't know how they got that. The only thing that I know is that they have this on their bank account. Their bank account is at Crédit Dépôt, Crédit à la Caisse des Dépôts et Consignations. They have this amount, but I don't know. Alors, now EDF, they have to buy their allowances. It's an industry with uh, power plants, and so power plants, no more free allowances. They have to buy them at auctions. Okay, but I don't know when did they buy auctions. If they had this detention because they bought futures, and the futures, when they come to maturity, the seller gave them, I don't know. The only thing that I know, alors, I could reconstitute the, the, the series thanks to the log. So if I go to the log, this one, I track EDF, and I track EDF trading, and I track all things, and I track their bank accounts day per day, day per day, day per day, I will reconstitute how they got their allowances. Okay, but this is a job to do. Okay? Okay. So some math. This was was the data. Alors it's a, okay. Do you have questions? Yes. They are completely public with the name of people. Or companies. Every company is there. there. Three years latence. So you have time. Okay. So, together with Sarah, we, worked, we started to work on that. Uh, first, because we like dynamic programming and uh, stochastic control and optimization. And so we were looking for a problem that would be interesting, and we find this one. And we, we noticed that this, this mechanism of allocation was dynamic. So you, you give allowances to people, and then you reduce the rhythm at which you give allowances, and so on and so forth. So, so the research question that we asked, and in fact it was a research question that, that was already present in Lucas Taschini and uh, Kohlenberg uh, uh, paper, which was at which rhythm a regulator should provide allowances in the market for efficiency, with a broad definition of meaning of what would be. And so we, we, we asked ourselves this, this, this same question, if we consider a wide class of dynamic allocation processes, the kind of classes where you don't have constraints of, of boundaries, okay? No boundary constraints. Which ones are optimal to achieve a given expected emissions reduction over a finite time horizon at minimal expected abatement cost? Research question. It's framed. D'accord? Okay. 
Surprising result. I break my cost. So, uh, it's a very good question. I thank you for the, for the question. And I'm trying, going to try to, to answer. Uh, well. So, if you look at companies who, are this, who have this obligation, they have a limited number of allowances. Okay? And nevertheless, they have their business. Okay. So, they emit, maybe they emit. Bah. And there is a price for carbon because people are trading. Okay. So, think about that. They have the following choice. Either, if they, they, for instance, they have a big, big, big business and they have a lot of activity and they produce a lot of goods and so they produce a lot of polluters. Okay? Okay, so they do that. Okay. So they have the following choice. Either they buy permits on the market to, to be compliant or they find, they try to, to spend some money to reduce their emissions by improving their technology. Okay? And to do that, they will need to spend money. And they will need to spend money. This money that they spend to reduce their emission rate is their abatement cost. Okay? This is the abatement function. Okay? If I want to reduce my emission, I will need to pay something. Okay? And the more I would like to reduce my emission, the more I need to pay. Okay? And the more it's going to be costly. Okay? So, if the class of dynamic allocation processes is large enough, the optimal policies are those who maintain the price of allowances constant. Okay? So this one is, uh, is very, although I like it a lot, I'm sorry, I like it a lot, because if, if you remember the, the discussion on, on carbon emission markets, it started in 1976, by opposition of those types of markets, cap and trade mechanism, and taxes. Okay, you can put a tax or develop this complicated market. Okay, when you put a tax, the tax can be increasing or decreasing because you can write in the law the path at which you will move the tax across time. Okay, but nevertheless, you have to write it in the law. Okay, tac, 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 and it's trajectory. I don't know, you can, you can write also a tax which is conditional because it can depend on the price of something. The tax is 20% the price of uh, this, this asset. Uh, this one is complicated because of the risk in the future. Or you can really write the tax is 100 euro per ton. And it is in the marble. Okay? And the price of carbon in the, this market, you have seen that it is very volatile. Okay? And this result is showing that basically the optimal allocation mechanism is the one which will maintain the price constant. Okay, so it's a, just like a tax. Okay, this one is funny. Okay, well, I find it funny, but uh, okay. So, and second point, optimal dynamic allocation, how does it work and why is there? They, they compensate firms for business cycles, economic shocks. And this is the, this is the thing, because, because the difference between a tax, the tax, you pay the tax and it is done. Here, in, our, in the model that I'm going to show, the regulator is very active. He's very smart and he's very active because he's injecting and withdrawing allowances in the market exactly at the right pace to maintain a price constant which will induce a constant effort of abatement which will reduce the irreversibility costs. Okay? We are going to see that. Now I have your attention. It's very nice, huh? Monsieur? Yes, yes. The market, the year, or, um, alors, alors, you're going to see this one before it was reality. Okay. Uh, ah, yes. Yes, he said, but uh, you're saying that this one is not compliant per, uh, with what you said about the regulation of the market, where you can touch the boundary once, and so on and so forth. This one is reality. Now we enter in a different world, which is the world where we can make computations. Okay? You're going to see. And in the world where we can make computations, all the complicated stuff of the regulators are going to disappear so that we are left with something which is very nice and very capable of, uh, of competition. Oui, yes, sir. Yes, I will translate. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Yes. 
s'arrête les, 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 les flux, et donc à aboutir vers des métiers qui est faite. Alors, et donc, comme il y a un coût d'installation de marché administratif, enfin, de transaction qui est supérieur au, au coût d'installation d'une taxe, a priori, est-ce que ça veut dire que. La taxe serait meilleure OK, first I translate. This is exactly the debate. The debate is, to handle a tax, you just put a number in the law, which is not easy, because in European Union, you need to have unanimity for a new tax, but whatever. You imagine that. Then you convince people, because then you're going to say that this market is going to need a very strong regulation process, and blah, blah. And, and so it's going to be very costly. There's going to be administrative costs and friction costs, and that, whereas for the tax, it's immediate. Okay, but in fact, the, if we do the, the, the computation, the tax in here, alors it depends because you're, it depends from what point of view you are because the tax is going to raise a lot of money for the state owner. The tax people pay, they pay the tax on every ton of carbon emission that they emit and they make that and they, it is in the pocket of the state. Okay, but regarding everything, then the, the problem of this tax is that there is going to be I don't know exactly, but it's going to be socially m more expensive. There's, there's going to be costs that are not going to be recovered with the tax compared to the active regulator. This is what we're going to see. Okay? Okay? Alors, let me... Yes, yes. Alors, this one is quite assertive, but I did not do all the computations right. Bon, but normally it works. Okay. You're going to see. No, but also you're going to see the model. Hein? The model... Uh, Okay, it's very abstract. Okay, so first, uh, the model and this one. So first, there is a regulator who wishes to reduce the emission of a set of capital... N no, now it's, uh, now it's EMPT, Mathematics for Planet Earth, Mathematics, okay? Before carbon, now Mathematics. Okay, so you have a regulator. Uh, the regulator faces capital N firms, and he has a period of time zero capital T, okay? And we are going to consider zero capital T as the compliance period. Okay? No intermediate period. Each firm follows, its emission follows this, which is absolutely unrealistic, but whatever. I'm going to see why it is not unrealistic. So firm I, there is a trend which is constant, and there is a noise, sigma I. Okay? And this one is total emissions for the firm I. So at time zero, I don't care, it is, it is zero, and the only thing that it cares about is the increase of emission during the period zero capital T. Okay? And it is not completely realistic because, because this one is a Brownian motion, your emission can reduce. Okay, because the Brownian, it can go like this. So you see your emissions that, that reduces mechanically, but whatever. Okay, it works like that. And WUE, the, the shock of the emission of the firm, is composed of two independent shocks. This one is common to all the firms. It's the microeconomic shock of the activity. And this one is the idiosyncratic. So this one hurts only the firm I, whereas this one hurts all the firm, but with a, with a factor which depends on the firm. Okay? Okay? If Ki is equal to zero, it means I'm only hurt by my own idiosyncratic shock, and I don't care about macroeconomics of the activity. Okay? And in the business as usual, if you don't do anything, It's, it's the, the emission, the total emission of the firm at terminal time is going to be the number of firms times the average emission rate times the period, capital T. Okay? This one is simple. Is it d'accord? You have your emissions, they grow on average with mu bar. You have capital T period. Mu bar is the average emission rate of your low firms. D'accord? It, it grows like linearly. Okay? And the regulator wishes to achieve, to reduce the emission to This number, okay? So this one is the number of business as usual, and he wants to put a row here, and row is between zero and one. If row is very small, it means that you really want to reduce emissions very strongly, okay? Net zero should be something like row equals zero, okay? It's a very simple model. Emissions grow linearly with a shock. There is a volatility, sigma i, the retro trend, okay? Very simple, very unrealistic. Completely unrealistic. Okay? And so, j'ai appuyé sur le bouton, oui. Ah, même la flèche marche plus. Attendez, si c'est bon. Dynamic allocations, bank accounts, abatement effort, and trading. So now, the regulator, what he says, he considers possible instruments, dynamic allocation of allowances. Okay, so what is it? I cannot deal 
with the true regulation with this boundary stuff. Okay, difficult. What I decide, I decide we did not AIT with a tilde the cumulative allocation process to firm I up to time T. So you have to imagine that this one, they, <laughs> this one, AIT, there is no auction in my model. There is no auction. The regulator directly put on the bank account of the firm number I, the number AIT, and AIT, it is the cumulative. Huh? C'est l'integral. It is the integral up to time T of how much allocation it puts to the bank account I. Okay? And the cumulative allocation, the increment, they can be composed of an absolutely continuous part, a rate, a Brownian part, and even singular part. I don't know. Okay? It's open. D'accord? So far, so good. Okay? Now, at time t equals zero, the regulator opens the bank accounts for each firm and credit or debit. It's important because in my model, I have no constraints. I cannot handle constraints. Okay? I have no constraints, so they put on the bank account the amount AI0 of allowances. Okay? AI0 is a positive or a negative number. Positive, it means it gave allowances. Negative, it means you put a debt to the bank account. Okay? And the dynamics of the bank account of firm I is given by the following dynamics. Alors, capital XI is the number of allowances. This one is the variation. And the variation, the, the bank account varies because there is a variation in the allocation process, in magenta. Or it decreases, look at that, there is a minus, and it decreases because the firm I makes this abatement effort alpha I of T. So when I make an abatement effort alpha I of T, there is a minus, my allowance decreases. If alpha I is equal to zero, I am left with only this part and my allowance increases. Okay? But, je me suis trompé ou je me suis pas trompé? Oui, oui, merci. Oui, oui. There is two times the sign minus just to see if after the lunch you're sleeping. Okay? No, that, 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 huh? the, the, no but the, it is not. Huh? It's not. There should not be a, a minus here, okay? Uh, this one is wrong, okay? Because there is already the minus here, okay? But it can do something else. It can buy allowances, okay? It can buy or sell allowances. Beta i is a number, and it's going to be determined at equilibrium. And this one is a trading rate, and people can do that. They can buy or sell allowances. Abatement rate, alpha i abatement rate, beta i trading rate, and this is the dynamics of the bank account. And uh, yes, yes, no, merci. Yes, but here there is no error sign. Thank you, thank you, professor. <laughs> is that right? Because in this formula, it makes clear that your bank account, at a, at, you imagine that at time zero it is positive, then it is decreasing because of this minus. So. Your bank account is decreasing because you're producing emissions, so there is a minus. But if you make abatement effort or if you buy allowances, then your bank account increases. Okay? So you can compensate. Okay? So far, so good. It's complicated, huh? The present rate being is just buy or sell. Yes. Yes. Okay? No. Hmm. No, it's next slides. Professor, Mr. No, there is no, I there is no auction, there is no boundary. Uh, bank accounts can be positive and negative and so on and so forth. Okay, so if, if you put constraints, it's a new paper. If you do that, new paper. Okay? No, but I'm very interested to, <laughs> to see that. Okay, abatement efforts. Abatement efforts. So there are going to be two parts in the abatement, in the abatement efforts. So alpha is the abatement effort of, of a firm. HI is a proportional cost. So this part is linear, simple. And the second part is quadratic. Alors first, it's because in linear quadratic stuff, we can, we can do computations. So we, can, we, we will be able to, to solve the, the stuff. But also, 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 
I say that this cost is recoverable. You, you can recover this cost, whereas you cannot recover this one. Why is that? The thing which is possible is that, you're going to see in a few minutes, that if you make an abatement, effort alpha, it's going to cost you HI. But then you realize that it was a bad decision. So you want to do minus alpha. If you do minus alpha, it's going to get you back your HI. Do you agree with this? I do an effort alpha, one, it costs me HI. And then I do the effort minus one, so it costs me minus HI, so I recover my cost. It's just like I make a small cost investment, it's a small investment, like I put something, and then I, I realize that it was a bad decision, but I can resell this stuff, and I get back my money. It is not possible with the second one, because of the square. If I take a positive decision, and I want to unwind my positive decision with a negative decision, I will pay this cost at I. I won't avoid this one. So this one is proportional, and this one is the larger, the, the, the smaller the eta I, the more difficult for me it is, and the more costly for me it is to take an irreversible decision. Sir? Yes. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. Yes. There you're dead. Okay. Reversibility. Reversibility cost. Irreversibility cost. Okay. And it's very very simple. And now, if you give me a, a process of allowances capital P, if you give me a dynamic allocation by the regulator for each firm, each firm I wishes to solve this optimization problem, which is a minimization. He would like to minimize from zero to capital T the expected abatement cost, plus the cost of buying allowances at the price PT, which is a random process. Okay? And at terminal time, he needs, we, we, we want the terminal, at terminal time that the bank account is zero. You see, at, at terminal time, you need to be compliant. And to be compliant, for instance, would be to multiply this, this bank account with a positive part. Because if you are, if you are Okay, if you're negative, it means that you made much more efforts than required, okay? But it's much easier to handle the quadratic case. Theoretically, it is possible to handle with a positive, the, the, a positive part, so that if you are negative, you don't pay anything, okay? But, and it's possible to, to do things uh, theoretically, but uh, analytically, it's easier to handle the quadratic case, okay? Are you going to see that? And lambda is a parameter for the terminal bank account imbalances, which reflects long-term social damages. Okay? And also it reflects, for instance, the penalty that you have to pay if you are not compliant. Okay? And you see that everything stops at terminal time, okay? so there is no second period, and so on and so forth. Okay? It's strange, huh? Time goes very fast. No, but, uh, yes. They, 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 they knew by advance how much they would receive for the next five years. It's clear on the, on the picture. Oh, so they knew. Beforehand, yes. A total yes. They knew this year you're going to receive this amount, and next year this amount, this amount, this amount. At time zero. And, and, the, and the three last years, maybe it was a surprise because they received an amount which was constant, and it was the same. This is absolutely not this setting. To go back to the. To ah, it, oh, I don't know. It's, uh, it's, uh, there is no compliance. Alors, si, si, alors, attends, t'espètes, t'espètes. Here, there is a compliance cost because at terminal time, for the cachant, uh, for, yeah, yes, there is a compliance cost. I'm going to pay it. Okay, now but je, I will go faster. I will go faster. Okay. No. No, it does not. And the last one, but the paper is not finished yet. We salut Luca. Uh, we are waiting for you. 
uh, we're waiting, uh, it's almost done. The, in the second paper, there is also production and you earn money when you produce. And so there is a, the more you produce, the more money you make, but the more emissions you make. In this model, there is no production. And there is no, for instance, the value of your production, nothing. It's only pure abatement. It is, maybe. And here there is nothing like this. No relation with that. Okay? Uh, no. Okay, okay, no, je vais avancer. Okay? Pof, pof. Voilà, this one. And now, market equilibrium. Market equilibrium for a given allocation scheme for each firm. A market equilibrium is a vector of process of abatement and trading rates such that they both, for each people, they realize the infimum and they clear the market. And beta i clears the market. Okay? So this one is, is simple. Okay? So you give me the allocation process. I need to find the equilibrium price so that everybody at each instant their trading rate is equal to zero. Okay? Okay, and now, on top of that, the regulator. So this one, the regulator, what he wants to look for, what he's looking for is precisely this guy. This one, okay? And look at that, so the regulator, what he wants to do, he wants to minimize, and look at that, the problem of the regulator is very simple, because for him, because of the clearing condition, the trading, all the trading, he does not care about trading. He only cares about abatement cost for all the firms and the penalties. Okay? So it's, for him, trading, he does not care because it's just an exchange of money between firms. So he does not care. So he wants to achieve, and look at that, there is this constraint. He wants that the total, the expected emission at terminal time is rho times the business as usual. So he really wants to find this allocation process so that you reduce emission. Okay? So far, so good. Do you agree with me that it is difficult? Vous êtes d'accord que c'est pas facile? Okay? Si on vous, if you were asked like that, hein? and in fact, because, attendez, attendez, no, I want to say something. I would like to say something. I would like to say something. Because I tried to solve this problem with Sarah. We started with this. And I started using complicated stuff like dynamic programming because it is linear quadratic. And I wanted to use things very complicated like that. And Sarah said, no, 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 no. It's a, no, 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 no. We can handle that by gradient methods. And I think that you're going to like it. I'm very happy that you are there. Because you can handle that with gradient methods. And if we manage to do that before the time, it will be enough. Because this one is a, a, vraiment, it's a beautiful. So I need to introduce uh, some notations. And there were tilts everywhere because, in fact, the deterministic trend we don't care about. Okay, we don't care about deterministic trend, and so we define AI of t the allocation, which is the tilt minus the deterministic trend. Okay, and there is one thing which is very important. It is this guy MI at time t, and MI at time t is the conditional expectation of how much the firm I will receive in total. Okay? And this is the real control of the regulator. The real control of the regulator is exactly this variable mi small t, because this one is the anticipation of what is going to be delivered to firm number i. Okay? And, there is, and when you see a bar like this, it's not a, a place where you, you have a drink. It's just the average quantity over the people. Okay? Okay, the bar, the bar, the bar, the bar. Okay? And uh, the, there is only one h bar which is the, the average of the hi uh, eta i. It's a, it's a mixture, okay? So just notations. You, you can forget it's just numbers. But this one, this, one, this one is important. This one is going to be very important. Okay, so the results. First, market equilibrium. Okay, first we need to determine market equilibrium. Market equilibrium. Alors, je ne sais pas si je l'ai fait là dans ce, ce slide. Je... J'ai fait tellement de copier-coller, I did so many copy-paste that I don't know exactly if I have put the proof. But uh, don't worry, uh, I can make it, uh, I can make it. Okay, 
So if you give me a, a net allocation scheme AI, the inequilibrium market is given by this Cauchy problem. First, it is P is a martingale. P hat is a martingale. Whatever the allocation process, P hat is going to be a martingale, and this martingale will be given by this Cauchy problem. The value P0 is going to be given by this F0 times this one. M0 bar is a quantity which is in the hand of the regulator. Here, it is the process of how much are going to deliver to firms, and this one is the average shock of the economy. Okay, and here there is a minus, and there is no mistake this time, and this quantity is positive. Okay, and the abatement effort is just the equality between marginal cost of abatement and prices, and it gives you that the abatement effort for every firm is like this. Eta i times the price minus h i. And the trading rates in our model, the trading rates are non-unique. The only thing which is unique is the total trading. There are some reasons, but this one I can leave it aside for two seconds. Look at this formula. Is it correct? It is correct. Why is it correct? This one is negative. Forget about this one. Imagine that M bar T is constant. The regulator has announced something and he won't deviate, and whatever. He said, for instance, the real European Union trading system, this one is, n is zero because you give allowances at time zero and then you forget. Okay, phase one. You give allowances, you forget. DM is zero. So if DM is zero, you are left with this one. If there is a positive shock in the economy, positive shock in the economy means more allowances. More allowances, the price increases. Minus, minus. Negative shock, the price decreases. Okay? Now look at that. The regulator can control the variation of the price by controlling the anticipation of how much allowances is going to give to people on average. If he says that DM bar T is positive, I'm going to provide more allowances, open bar. Hop, the price decreases. We need to increase the price of carbon. It's not fair that we have a price of carbon of five euros. We need to reduce emission. DM bar negative. Negative, negative, positive. It works. Okay? So this is how we can control the price. By just controlling the amount of allowances is going to put in the system is going to control the price. Okay? Question? No? Ah, si, je l'ai mis, j'ai mis la preuve. <laughs> je découvre mes slides. Uh, oui, 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 c'est bon. Alors, why? Because you just have to take the first order condition with respect to the controls alpha i and beta i. Okay? So you take the derivative of this guy with respect to alpha i and beta i. I did not know to do that, but Sarah explained it to me. Uh, it takes time, but uh, finally understood. Huh? Okay, no, so this one is very simple. You take the derivative with respect to alpha i. Alpha i is, is here. And so you get h i here. You derive uh, this one, one over h uh, alpha i. Do you agree? And then you, 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 with respect to alpha i, you have to take care because in, in x i t, in x i t, remember, in x i t, you forgot, but not me. In XIT, there is alpha i. So you have to take care. But a simple computation and uh, a simple computation show that the gradient of this guy here is 2 times lambda times the conditional expectation of this guy. Okay? So you have to do the. No, il faut travailler un petit peu. Just, uh, okay? And this one is marginal penalty. This one is the first order condition with respect to alpha i. When you take derivative with respect to beta i, it gives you the same. Pt, 2 lambda, exp condition expectation with respect to t of this guy. Okay? And then you solve. First, do you agree with me that now Pt, it is clear that it Pt is a martingale? Now Pt is a martingale. Huh? It's a conditional expectation of something at terminal time. So it is a martingale. And so because this one is a martingale, okay, je connais, je vois, PT. PT, I, take, I make the sum of every one, I take the clearing condition, and I get that PT is minus lambda, 
it is exactly minus two lambda condition expectation of the average at terminal time. And this one is the marginal penalty. The price is always equal to the marginal penalty. Okay? And because alpha i are martingales, look at that, this one is a martingale, this one is a number, so alpha i is a number, so martingales, it satisfies this relation, and so the average result and the effect. So this one's very simple. You just have to compute the first order condition with respect to alpha i. I don't even need to know the allocation process capital A. Okay, and I have the equilibrium. Okay, and now, since I have this nando that alpha bar is a martingale, I can compute this expectation at terminal time. Okay, this one is just this one. You take a little time. You have this one is a martingale, so from zero to t it is something, and then it is the expectation. You do this, pop, 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 and you get your Cauchy problem. So this one is remarkable because if you try to do it with, a, you can do it with backwards, I think. Huh? I know that people are trying to do with the stochastic backward differential equations. It should work because it is exactly the non-Markovian case. But here, three lines of derivative, and then it's done. Okay, this one is remarkable. Okay, no, but it's true. It's not bad. Okay, no, but if, if I don't say it, nobody will say it. Okay, so consequences, consequences, the, the, direct. So now I know I have the equilibrium. Total expected emissions only depend on average effort rate alpha bar. And since it is a martingale, I can compute what's going to be the emissions at terminal time under any regulation. Under any regulation in this model, it's going to be this one. And if I want to achieve a reduction by a factor rho, I have no alternative. I have to take p hat at time zero equal this guy. There is no choice. It has to be this value. Okay? So two components, regularity, bon, ça je, je passe, et tout ça. It's, it's very, very simple. But it, it, and the more you want to be restrained, uh, the higher the price. And in this model, uh, if you don't take parameters uh, properly, you can have a negative price, but whatever, you take caution, and then it's good. Okay, so this one is good, P0. But more than that, consequences for optimal regulation. The expression of P hat zero is given in the Cauchy problem. In the Cauchy problem, remember, I said that P hat zero is this guy. So if I know the value of this guy, I know exactly how much emission I should put at time zero. Look at that. Okay. So to achieve a reduction by a factor rho, I, hein? ça, ça doit être égal à I can compute m bar zero. It is equal to this value and it is L zero. And beware, this value is negative. It is negative. Ooh, negative. Bad. Negative. Suppose that the regulator does not want to add or withdraw on average allowances during the period zero capital T. So it declares something and then it's done. I don't move anymore. It means m bar zero is going to be the allocation at time zero plus the expectation from zero of all the increment. And I say that I want this guy to be zero. So I want a bar zero to be negative. So a process in which the regulator says, I'm going to provide emission at time zero and then bast, but it's a process where you start by putting a depth on average in the system. So it is exactly the opposite of the UTS. The UTS at time zero, you provide the amount of emissions that you want that nobody exits and you give them those papers. In this mechanism, you do the opposite. You start at time zero by saying you already owe me something. Okay, you already owe me something. So it's a depth at time zero. Beware, there is, there is tricks, but whatever. And now rephrasing the regulator optimization problem. Now I know, I know the optimal, I know the market equilibrium. When I decide the market allocation, capital AI, I know what's going to be the allocation. Do you agree with me that the thing which is important here is that I know for each firm, for each firm, the abatement effort is a linear function of the price. 
Vous êtes d'accord It's simple, it's a linear function of the price. In affine in French. But it's linear. So when you plug this linear function in the abattement cost, what you have, what you will get when you are going to plug it here, here you are going to have something which is linear in the price plus a term which is quadratic in the price. You agree? Is it d'accord? There is alpha i and alpha i to the square. Alpha i is going to give you something linear. Alpha i to the square is going to give you something with terms of p to the square. Okay? The terms which are linear in alpha, it's dead. You cannot pick them because the expected price, the price is a martingale, so on average it's equal to its initial value, and the initial value is determined by the amount of reduction that you want to, ex to, to succeed in. So the expected price, it's dead. There is no control over it. It is determined by the constraint. So you are left only with one variable, which is the expectation of the price to the square. Okay, using the fact that PT is again, okay, you are left with this. Okay, here it is written. So you have P and PT to the square. The expected price is determined by the level of reduction. It's dead. You cannot control it. The expectation of P hat to the square is P0 to the square, is the expectation of the quadratic variation of the price. Okay? So the regulator's minimization problem boils down exactly to minimizing the quadratic variation of the price. So it means it, it's, it's, its objective is to minimize the volatility of the price. And it can. Mi a martingale, they can be written like this. And you just need to find volatilities for this allocation so that the quadratic variation of m bar minus w bar is equal to zero. One possibility is to give to each firm sigma i w i. So you give to each firm exactly the shock that they, that they, they leave. Or the alternative is to say that I'm going to use only the average. I'm going to take m bar equal to w bar. And I'm going to scatter the shock between firms, I don't know how. Okay? Okay, okay. Uh, voilà, c'est ça. Bon. Are there questions? C'est fini, là? Voilà, this is the summary. This is the summary. And why is that? Alors, ça, c'est exactly what, what, I, what I've said. It is exactly that. And why is that? Why is that? before uh, I leave uh, the floor to the next. Where is the benefit of a dynamic allocation scheme compared to a simple static initial allocation? You give allowances to people and then buy. Alors, the static allocation corresponds to something like this. You give something LR. You need to achieve the same level of reduction. Okay. For sake of computation, I suppose that all firms endure the same adjustment cost because then it's easier to make the computation. And we denote delta stat the difference between the social cost with the static allocation and the social cost under an optimal dynamic allocation. Okay? And in fact, you can compute that this quantity is equal to this value, with this one equal to this, this stuff. Okay. So in the presence of uncertainty or irreversibility, there is a benefit from dynamic allocation. The cost is here. If eta is small, c'est ça, hein? if eta is small, eta is also here, So beware, you have log of 1 plus eta divided by eta, so you have to take care, but this one is large. Okay? If eta is small, this quantity becomes large. So if there is irreversibility, by using dynamic allocation, okay, you're going to provide exactly the, you're going to offset the shocks that firms leave. And by offsetting the shocks that firms leave, you will maintain their efforts constant. Okay. Whereas if you give allocation at time zero, and it's a fixed number, it is not optimal because firms will have to adapt to a volatile price. And in this model, adapting to a volatile price means making alpha and then minus alpha decisions which, are, which provide reversib irreversibility cost. Okay, this one is the same, this one is the same. So dynamic allocation provides insurance to firm for common economic shocks. Also, this is an important thing. If, if you assume that, for instance, that there is no common shock, no financial crisis 2008, 
no COVID crisis, no Ukraine crisis, nothing like that, then in fact you don't care. You don't care because if there is so many installations and so many firms, then the law of large numbers is going to leave this, to, to lead to this number is going to go, is going to, c'est ça, je me suis pas trompé, yes. If there, is, if there is a common noise, when any, the pair unit different cost admits a finite limit, making also dynamic beneficial. It's a way to say that if there is no common shock, this quantity is going to go to zero. The pair unit firm is going, cost is going to be to zero, and so you don't care. And this one is known. If you have a lot number of firms, then shocks which happen randomly to each firm, they compensate each other and you don't care about that. Okay, what time is it? I leave time for questions. I was, he was uh, moving on his chair. So thank you for your attention. Uh, okay, and there, there are more than that.